Hey everybody, Tommy here at the Fast Lane Now, and I'm reporting to you from on top of a sand dune because I am out here at the White Sands National Monument with my friend Jenna. Wave, Jenna! And this is a quick long-term update on our 2006 Land Rover Discovery that we drove out here all the way from Colorado. Now I would love to show you how this thing performs on these sand dunes, but unfortunately there is a strict no driving off-road policy, so can't do that. But I can certainly tell you how this truck has been doing and what issues we've had on our 600 and some mile road trip, because hint, there actually really haven't been any knock on Land Rover, of course. So here's our truck. It's a 2006 Land Rover Discovery 3 or LR3 for here in the US. It has just under 140,000 miles and we bought it a little while ago for just $5,000. And of course the internet freaked out and told us how crappy it would be, but it has actually been almost dead solid and has been really fun to drive in a lot of different ways. We'll talk about that here in this video. So let me start it up and show you just how many miles we've put on this truck in the last two days driving through southern Colorado, all the way through New Mexico, almost into Texas here, and El Paso. All right. There we have it. 660 miles, bringing the total mileage to 138,773, and an average fuel economy of about 16.7 and I have checked that with the pump it is pretty dead reliable so you can see no check engine lights no warning lights this thing has been almost dead solid this whole route except for one little minor issue which I'll show you out here we actually did lose this trim piece on the highway luckily I was able to recover it just outside of Colorado Springs uh, where is it it's on the other side and this is a uh, full road trip prep this car so it's got a lot of crap in it but here it is this is the a pillar trim piece that decided it no longer wanted to be part of the car and you can see what happened um, it actually fell off a few days ago on the highway so there are is one clip that's a new clip I put in I thought that would fix it here's a third one but basically it's missing the actual retainer here for the bottom clip so it really doesn't secure at the bottom and strong, strong crosswinds will rip this thing off. So it's time for a new one of those. I'll track one down, probably on eBay, and go from there. So you can see tons of luggage, tons of baggage. I got my camera bag, clothes and coats and stuff. It all fits in here brilliantly because that's one of the best parts of the Discovery for a road trip vehicle. There is just so much room inside and out. I mean, it's basically just one huge box. So tons of places to put things, um, and even weird things fit in here nicely because just of its squared off shape. Let me show you the trunk. Split tailgate. I've got some just emergency gear in here, sleeping bags, air compressor, sunshades alike. Of course, if we had more friends in here, I could clear this stuff out um, and have people sit in the second row. Heck, even the third row, potentially. That's how big it is. Split tailgate is good. When you're out trying to put shoes on, we just went for a hike. Putting on hiking shoes and getting sand out of shoes is great here. Just simply plop up here and do what you need. That's convenient. And then towing capacity as well. This Discovery 3 is rated to tow over 7,000 pounds, but this aftermarket hitch is only rated to 5,000. So potentially we could even tow a little bit if we needed to. Now in the last few months we've owned this vehicle, we've put a few thousand miles on it. And we've really only had one issue. We got a check engine light and it was an error regarding the thermostat basically the thermostat had crapped out and um, wasn't bringing the engine up to temperature in the correct speed so basically it was saying hey the engine is taking too long to heat up it's time for new thermostat so we had that swapped out the part I think was like 80 bucks and then 120 for labor it wasn't too expensive but other than that it's been absolutely perfect we'll pop the hood and talk about what engine we have here now you can buy these LR3s all day long for really between four and seven thousand dollars depending on the year and the options and there are two engines that were available here in the US the base engine was a four liter v6 it's hard to do with one hand here four liter v6 out of the basically the Ford Explorer this is the AJ v8 so 300 horsepower it's not really the quickest thing on the roads I mean of course it'll do 75 all day long but when you really need to pass people I've noticed in some of the two-lane roads coming out to the sand dudes 
it's you, you really just have to stick your foot in it and just hope that you've got enough torque to get you where you need to go because well it made 300 horsepower 14 years ago hauling i don't know 5500 pounds of suv and all of our stuff uh with 140,000 miles it certainly is not brisk but it's very smooth very quiet revs nicely i've been checking the oil occasionally haven't used a single drop of oil that's all been good your battery lives under here as does your air filter and man i wish you could drive out on these dunes because i think that would be just so much fun so some modifications on this land rover the previous owner put on this uh push bar here this is actually a factory option with these led lights and we're going to be using these led lights today on the way home when it gets dark and some of the the um, private back roads out here there's just just gets so dark and these do a great job of shining out there uh, you've got the grill guards here and my favorite feature of course the snorkel not that we need the snorkel in the middle of new mexico but it's there it looks cool roof rack on top if you needed a roof bat box it really is a a great uh road trip vehicle it doesn't doesn't get any better now even though this fell off i don't think this is affecting anything it, it doesn't seem to mind whatsoever and this is really what makes this vehicle is so great for road trips that's the seating position so you get in here and you just sit so high off the ground you can see the whole world you've got this huge windshield huge windows that dip below the seats the seats in the l3 are actually higher than your traditional suv seats giving you what's called a command driving position and trust me out on the road it works super 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 well i mean it really is makes it one of the best road trip vehicles anywhere now this is an se trim which is a somewhat base model so we're missing some options like the uh, navigation and infotainment screen here. We don't even actually have any heated seats as well. Air conditioning is awesome. Heat is awesome. Dual zone automatic climate controls here. That's where your heated seats would go if you had them. Uh, in Colorado in the winter, it'd be great to have them just because it's. it feels like a luxury vehicle. It would be nice to have that luxury. One thing we've noticed for road trips here is there's just tons of stuff to put things. So you've got cubbies here on the dashboard, the big one in the middle. Uh, dual glove boxes for a satellite phone in case something goes wrong. Uh, cup holders on the side, cup holders in the middle. You can see Jenna has her stuff all over here and it's just, it's great. It's, it's super comfortable. These seats are awesome. Power of seats, but they've got super cushy headrests, decent support here for the lower back and nice soft uh, bottom cushions as well. I love the steering wheel. It's got a nice thick feeling to it. And it has steering wheel controls as well, so you can adjust the radio or the audio up and down using the buttons here without having to reach for the volume knob. It's a small thing, but it's great on road trips. Cruise control there, easy to use. It's not adaptive, nothing like that. Um, and then voice command. I haven't found a single use for voice command. I'm not sure what that actually controls, but it's here if you need it. One thing that is wrong with this car, we bought it broken like this, is actually the automatic headlights don't work, so I just got to flip them on when it gets dark, flip them off in the daytime. Here you can see our zombie lights, which is uh, the aftermarket switch panel the previous owner installed. But yeah, I'm just so impressed. And like I said, it's primarily the driving position that transform, transforms this truck on the road because it's just, you see over everything. Um, and it's not great for, you know, sports cars, but in a truck like this, it's great sitting above the world rather than in the world. Dual sunroofs. This is actually a mesh shade. So when it gets really sunny, it's actually impossible to completely block out all of the sun hasn't been too big of an issue good sized visors with the mirror i have noticed so they don't extend outward so you do miss some coverage back here not a not a huge deal but it would be nice to have and then there you can see the stadium seating which is the elevated rear seat so if we had rear passengers they would be just as comfortable back here so other than it being a little bit slow dead it's been dead quiet incredibly comfortable and the radio is really good that's one of the options we do have we have the premium Harman Kardon sound system uh, with an auxiliary port here funny enough the auxiliary port is actually way back here in the rear and then you have to run a huge long cable to the front but we simply hook this up to our iPhone or if you had an Android you could do the same thing push the auxiliary button and then control it via your phone none of that is hard to do um, other things that are wrong with this with this truck rear parking sensors don't work <coughs> excuse me just getting over a cold and that's about it really it's it's been perfect it's been the perfect road vehicle fuel economy 16.7 really not all that bad for such a big heavy beast uh, going up hills it'll dip down into the 15s over a long period of time downhills maybe you'll hit 17 but 
16 and a half is about what we've been averaging. CD player, we don't have any CDs, but uh, of course, you, you know, you don't have your, your USB ports like modern vehicles, but we actually have this little adapter. We bought it like a dollar store and it plugs into the lighter and it works so well, unbelievably well. It is just incredible. So this has been keeping our phone charged. Um, of course, you do have a manual select if you're going downhill for extended periods. You can select your gear there. And then terrain response if you're doing any off-roading, but we're kind of on a schedule here. So 660 miles to get home. I'll let you know if something happens, but knock on Landover, all goes well. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time over at TFLcar and TFLtruck.com.